Welcome to an all-new episode of Duvall's Collection Expansion Extravaganza right here on ToyWorldOrder.com. We're your hosts, I'm Jason Duvall, this is the lovely wife, my better half, and the red-headed monster I call my best friend, Carrie Duvall. Too much? Well, I could jump out the monster part, but that's alright. That's alright. Gang, we got some awesome stuff for you this time around. What? What? You give me crap off camera all the time. Off camera. That's okay. This is my revenge. <laughs> we got some awesome stuff for you. We're going to start out with some stuffed animals. Um, you guys remember that we showed off some shirt tails a while back. Um, that we, we found a bunch of shirt tails. Some bigger ones, some smaller ones. We actually found a couple of uh, a couple more smaller ones. One of them was one of the Hardee's releases. Um, that, of course, you could go into Hardee's and buy in the 80s. And she was Pammy Panda. She's a Pammy Panda. She's cute. She's pretty cute. This was one of the ones we were missing. We're missing, I think all we're missing now is Ricky Raccoon. I think that's his name. Um, we've got them all but that one. So we've kind of been finding them at garage sales and flea markets. Um, and Pammy was one that I was like, oh, we don't have Pammy. We need her. So I picked up Pammy the Pam, but I think I spent two bucks on her. And then the other one I found that wasn't a Hardy's one, but one that, uh, again, there were so many different of these shirt tails that it's hard to tell where what came from or who sold what. Uh, this is actually Kip the Kangaroo. And I'd never seen Kip the Kangaroo before. Uh, I know it wasn't a Hardy's thing because she's, Kip's just a little bit bigger than Pammy. Um, kind of made the same way, but she's just a little bit bigger. So I was like, well, we don't have a Kip. Um, I'll take Kip too. And I think for the pair I paid like, I paid five bucks. I think Kip was three. Cause again, they were like, I've never seen Kip either. And I was like, I'll pay three bucks for Kip. Um, Awesome little shirt tails, but you can tell the tags are different. The tags are much different. This one was obviously Kip was a retail because um, her tag is is much. Uh, I won't say more detail, but it has more color. And this one is just you know your basic black and white. Hardy's is like, hey, we need you know three million of these things, and they sold the snot out of them. But what's funny is, for all the ones that were sold in Hardy's restaurants, you just you don't see them a whole lot. I don't see them a whole lot out in the wild. And when we do, usually we try to pick them up. Um, I think we've got an extra bogey that yeah. we bought just because we were like. He's a quarter. Yeah. Let's buy him. Um, neat little shirt tails figures, though. I love these figures. Uh, just cute little stuffed animals. And it was a cute, cute line. Um, if I could find old episodes of the animated show, we would watch the poop out of those. Because those are awesome. Awesome. Some more stuffed animals here for you. Of course, we have this infatuation with Muppets. We love the Muppets. Um, I've loved the Muppets since I was younger. Carrie's loved the Muppets for a long time. Um... One of her favorites, though, is Gonzo. Not her favorite favorite, but she loves Gonzo. Uh, and we found this uh, this stuffed Gonzo. One of the ones that you could get out of a crane game. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, this was for the 25th anniversary, which um, it's been some time now. I, I can't remember what year the 25 years was. Um, but, he, of course, he's got a little rose he's holding. Or not a little rose, but a tulip, a tulip I think. I think. Um, super cute stuffed Gonzo, though. Um, we've got an animal that's pretty much, I think, from the same kind of thing. Um, we got him at a yard sale. Yeah, we got him at a yard sale. Um, just sitting there. We were like, ooh, a gonzo. I think he was sitting in a box. Yeah. And we were like... I just think he's cute. He's all dressed up like he's yeah. going on a date or something. Oh, he's going on a date with Camilla. Oh, how cute. That was the only Muppets uh, stuffed animal we found. We found something that I spotted from a distance and went, I know what that is. And we don't have it. And it is this, baby piggy. For those of you wondering what's so special about this baby piggy, this is a world's a wonder bopper. It would uh, you put batteries in her? She doesn't work. I haven't taken her apart to fix her yet, um, just because I'm not looking forward to that because she is not put together the same as all the others are. Um, to basically to say it lightly, um, I put batteries in her. She didn't work, so I'm guessing the motors are froze up, which is fine because they can be fixed. But she would uh, she would dance and move her arms every time you would she would hear sound. There's a little microphone 
um, somewhere probably right here in the nose, there's a little microphone that would pick up the sound vibrations and she would dance and she would bop across the thing. Um, I think they made a Kermit. We haven't found Kermit, but I knew we didn't have Piggy. And she's actually one of the bigger boppers they made. Um, I think we've got, we've got Teddy, uh, Mickey, we've got a Goofy, um, Donald, but she was one from the Muppets that we didn't have. So I was like, ooh, again, garage sale for a quarter. Probably quarter 50 cents. Yeah, probably. so I was like, I don't ever see that bopper out and about anywhere. So she got picked up very quickly. But uh, something that I need to I need to fix. She needs to be taken apart anyway. Cause she needs to be washed really bad because she's pretty pretty nasty in some places. Uh, the dress is pretty dirty. She's got some spots on her. But even if I don't get her to work, she's still a great display piece and uh, one that again for the boppers you never see. So is she cute? She's so cute. Kermy. Again, bad bad piggy. Imitation that doesn't work. I'm not good at it. You want to keep the Muppets going along? Yeah, let's, yeah let's keep the Muppets going. Let's keep the Jim Henson stuff going. We, um, again, something else that we showed off a long time ago. Careful. Yep, that we, uh, we'd been trying to complete the collection, and the only pieces we were missing were Bert and Ernie. And these were from a, uh, uh Gorham from Japan. These were the, uh, from the Gift World of Gorham. Um, these were these very, they're, uh, I don't remember if they're, I think they're kind of ceramic, but they, uh, we found a lot of them. He's got some chips on it, but we found Ernie, and we found Bert. I don't know where we found these at. Do you remember? Yeah. Were these at, uh, those were at the estate sale. At an estate sale, that's right. And uh, these were the last two that we needed. Um, I believe, to, yep, right? Yep, to complete this collection, these were the last two that we needed. And we picked them up in a hurry, and I think they were like five or ten bucks a piece. And they were a must-have, because we had everybody else. We had the Sesame Street sign. We just needed Bert and Ernie. Um, and again, I think they might might be plaster is what these are made out of, um, painted plaster. But these are these are actually really hard to come by. And every time we've seen any of them, they go for they're expensive. Yeah. They're expensive. They're still to this day. They're like they, when they came out, they were probably 30, 40 bucks. And today they probably retail for 70, 80 a piece, depending on the figure, depending on the shape and the condition. Um, so these will uh, finish off our Gorham collection of Sesame Street Muppets. And I uh, was very happy to find them because we've been looking for a while. Um, we had passed up a whole collection of them once and kind of regretted it because we were like, well, crap, we knew where those were. We could go back and get them and they were gone. Mm -hmm. So, um, Bert and Ernie, very cool. Here, I'll put them over here so we don't okay. knock them over. Put them over there so we don't. I don't knock them over so I'm not like, Bruh! and they go flying. Yeah, I'll probably put them back there. Um, hey, you want to do your goofies? Those of you wondering, we've had to like strategically, strategically put some breakable stuff other places so it doesn't fall. <laughs> That's how bad it is, folks. Um, I found Carrie a couple little goofies. Actually, I think she found these in a... These were at um, the state sale. These were at the state sale. This one's a little ceramic goofy with a drum. I'm um, not sure where it came from, but it was just one of those little gift things you could buy for like probably 10 bucks. Um, he was pretty cute and he was in nice shape. And then this awesome goofy, which is another one of those like blown ceramic kind of pieces that are hand painted. Um, very cute. Of course, Goofy's Carrie's favorite Disney character of all time. So these were must-haves for uh, Miss Duvall here. Uh, she was like, I want them. I don't think we look alike. <laughs> Is that your two favorite Goofy? Well, <laughs> that's me blowing my gut out. I died not that big. But yeah, Goofy, Goofy always had a little bit of a pot belly. Um, I love Goofy stuff just as much as Carrie does. I love finding it and helping Carrie find it because she gets so excited when she finds a new Goofy item she doesn't have. Uh, which her goofy shelf uh, in her office has grown to the pat to the point where we have to buy another shelf so she can continue on her goofy stuff because it's yeah. the overflow. Uh, but we're not really knickknacky people when it comes to our normal domicile upstairs. Usually it's just the toy cave down here where we're like shelves and stuff everywhere. Yeah. So, but that's the only place in the house that Carrie's like, I want a shelf in my office for all my goofy stuff. So that's where all the goofy stuff goes. These goes, these guys though, since they're breakable, will probably go in our case. We got a big glass case that we put these guys in. Uh, they'll probably go in there to be displayed. So very cool little items. Let's uh, look at a couple of action figure things here. Um, of course, the anyone that knows me knows that I have a real uh, affection towards the little lines that just that could, but just couldn't make it. One of those lines was a line from Ravel, uh, who were known mostly for model kits in the '80s, and that line was a. Uh, a group of characters inspired by the artwork and design work of legendary sci-fi artist uh, Wayne Barlow. Uh, and of course the Four Horsemen Studios, if you're you know, familiar with toys these days, the Four Horsemen Studios are doing all new Glios compatible figures based on this line. And that line is none other than Ravel's Power Lords. 
Um, these are actually uh, from a, a friend of mine, Chad Plouffe. Uh, he helped me kind of finish up some collections. Um, so I got Side Out on the card, which Side Out's going to get open because I didn't have Side Out loose and complete. He's very hard to find uh, with his guns and his binocular and his vest intact. Um, it's kind of kind of tough figure to find complete uh, and expensive. But Chad actually helped me get get Side Out complete. And then uh, how do you say that one's name? This, there's a lot of G's in his name. <laughs> this one is uh, Gripatog. Uh, and Griptog is is loose and complete. He's got his little war hammer his there. Face in the front yep, of? his uh, you can turn his head because he's got two different faces. So he's got he's got his little like almost fish like face, and then he's got uh, he's got his monstrous face here. Um, very very cool uh, looking toy. Uh, very neat line for anyone wondering where Carrie's going. She's going to let the dogs out because much like last episode, he's crying. We're not sure why. He just wants attention. Uh, Revolves Power Lords, though, very very cool line. Very neat, uh, neat collection of figures, and uh, I love this line. I've got uh, all the first release and the vehicles. Um, just don't have the playset, which Vulcan Rock for this line is stupid, stupid expensive, uh, and uh, usually quite a bit of money for that. So, very cool line. Um, got a couple more action figure things to show you. Welcome back, my host. She's back. <laughs> Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. See, that's there's no point in cutting any of that out because that's shows you what how interesting our lives are and uh, interesting slash annoying. Mm. Yeah. I think I figured out what he wanted. I think he was hungry. He so was hungry still. So he's a hubby, hubby puppy. Continue, uh, on, continue she, on with the action figure. Hopefully that'll occupy him for ten hopefully. minutes. Hopefully. Um, this is something I've been looking for for a long time, and uh, myself, uh, Dave Draper, Pixel Dan, we all kind of wanted one of these, and the prices is always uh, extraordinary. I know at Kane County uh, this last October, I saw somebody had one on their table, wanted a hundred dollars for it in box, and the box was beat up. It was like, wow, that's Ooh. ridiculous. Sorry, I got it. now she, because of the prices. I just all of a sudden look. The goosebumps <laughs> everywhere over here. It's crazy cold. You're right. Which always excite me. I don't uh, know. That's awesome. <laughs> Hold I'm going to buy more. Oh, Jesus. So anyway, uh, Kenner released a line of Aliens toys in the late, mid-90s, late 80s, early 90s, probably 92, maybe 92, 93. Uh, and one of the things they did was a, a Queen Hive playset. And a friend of mine had one, and I remember thinking it was so cool. While uh, Carrie and I were in Volo, Illinois, at the, the car museum and antique mall, walked in there, and there was a guy that had, it was just a whole store full of toys. And he had underneath his table... He had this little beauty sitting under his table. And I asked him, how much you want for the Alien Queen High play set? And he looked at me and went, I don't know, I just got that lot in. Um, I don't know, how's 30 bucks sound? And I went, would you take my money? Because I knew how expensive they were. And this actually, again, has never been, um, never, ever, ever been, uh, been played with, been open. I mean, it's been open, but you can see the, uh, there's the, the can of ooze. ooze. Um, yep, still sealed. Yep, still sealed. All the contents here are still uh, still poly bagged. And uh, there's there's our, our good friend, the Alien Queen here. Um, she's pretty cool looking. Um, but all of this stuff, uh, I mean, this is just one of those places that it's I was like, I really, really would love to have one of these. And uh, never wanted to spend the extraordinary amount of money that people always seem to want for this toy. So it was something that I was like, well, I'll, I'll wait. Maybe someday I'll, I'll see it and pick it up for, you know, something less than a hundred bucks or just, more. You can just put that on the floor like that. Yeah, just put it on the floor So it was something that I'd looked around and was like, I really want one of those. And when he was like 30 bucks, I was like, brr, 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 making it I rain. I think you caught him at a good time when he hadn't had time to really look it up and research yeah, it. Yeah, he hadn't done much. I may be a bad person for taking advantage of that, but when he says 30 bucks, I'm not going to be like, you know how much that's really worth? Yeah, how about no? Because I'm like, I want to take that home, and it's going to come home with me. So, uh, Very cool Alien Queen high play set that's uh, going to go on the floor like this. Now, will I... you leave that in the box, or are you going to put it together? Or... You know, it's it's one of those things where it's... I really want to display it somewhere. Do you have the figure that comes with it in the back? I, I've got a bunch of Alien figures, yeah. Okay. Not the one that's on yeah. the back, but yeah, I've got a bunch of Alien mm -hmm. figures. Uh, it is a cool like play set when it's all together. And it's... Uh, it's it's something maybe eventually I'll display and put together somewhere, but for now it's like there's really no room. Much like back here, there's no room for anything really. I'm back. I can go far. I just went there, over there, right there. Um, 
couple kids books and tapes uh kids books and records i should say um a bunch of star wars ones actually uh, my buddy fred out in uh, uh salisbury. salisbury illinois uh has of course just collection after collection for collection of these kind of books and i found a bunch of star wars ones that are uh, 24 page read along uh, book and record so i found uh, return of the jedi uh ewoks join the fight of course it's still got its its record in here little little record um uh, very very fun, very cute little artwork. Lots of great uh, original artwork from Star Wars Return of the Jedi. Um, kind of telling the story of the Ewoks joining the battle and the, the, the winning the battle. And then these were actually all sealed. So uh, these are actually uh, all original. So we've got the book and record set for Star Wars. The book and record set for Empire Strikes Back. And the book and record set for Return of the Jedi. Um, all sealed. And I was like, I'm going to buy those because... Uh, those are too cool to pass up, especially when you've got the whole original uh, trilogy right there. So uh, something I really, really wanted to pick those up, which is really cool. Um, again, more book and record sets. More. Yeah. More kids' books. I was told to stop buying, but I didn't. Hi. Moving on. You never listen to me, so I don't know why. That's not true. I do. Sometimes. Ow. Ow, she hit me. This is something that had to, uh, again, more to my Little Mermaid collection. This is actually the, uh, you are the neediest needy dog ever. This is, uh, want to smell that some more there? This was the uh, collector's edition Ursula doll. This was brought out from Mattel in 97. Um, I actually have the Ariel, who's the companion piece of this that came out first. Uh, beautiful doll, same kind of thing. Had these uh, open tops here that flapped open. Kind of a 3D environment to show off the doll more. Um, she is an awesome, awesome doll. Um, just a beautiful, beautiful creation. These were like, when they came out, they were like 50 or 60 bucks. Um, I bought my Ariel on clearance uh, at Jack's. If anyone remembers the, the company in store, Jack's. Bought it at Jack's when it was on clearance for like $15. Uh, and this actually came uh, from a friend of uh, Dave Draper's girlfriend, Cherry. Uh, she was getting rid of this, and Dave actually picked this up for me because he's like, I know somebody who would want that. Because uh, it was something I didn't have. But a uh, very beautiful doll of a very classic Disney villain to one of my favorite all-time movies. So while it's not Ariel-specific, it's still going to go in the Little Mermaid display because I want the two dolls standing side by side. Um, just very, very cool limited edition doll. Uh, Mattel did a number of these. At one point, Mattel was going to do a whole run of dolls like this that were just villains. And they did Captain Hook, and then they never did anything mm, else. They should have done more, because they, they, these are really nice. Yeah, they're very cool. Very cool collector dolls. And, uh, you know, I get a lot of get get a lot of crap for being the doll guy. Uh, well, technically, I really don't have a lot of dolls, no. per se. Uh, but th this kind of stuff, though, I, I will grab and scoop up and be like, I'm taking it home. So, uh, very cool for them to, to for Dave to... to Pick this up for me and so I can add it to my collection. It's just a little dusty. Should get cleaned up and put up on the shelf. So very cool. Let's uh let's move on to a few board games and we'll wrap this episode up. Alright, wrap up this game with some board games. Um this one actually is uh, another uh, classic ideal game from the 60s. Um 1967, and it's called uh, the Toppling Tower Game Careful. Um, and there's a lot to this game. It is very, uh, lots of, wow. lots of towers. There's like, you know, um, spinner to add colors, lots of bases. So you how have, tall can this get? Um, I'm not sure how tall it can get. I know it can get very, very tall. Uh, and then of course the actual, the actual, the actual tower where if, you know, if it falls over, you hear the bell, that means you lost basically. Um, I'm not sure how exactly tall this thing can get. Pretty darn tall. If you list, there's a picture on the side, and it's like half the size of that guy almost. Yeah, it's it, it's. I mean, it can it can yeah. get it can get she's pretty standing big. Up. Yeah, she's standing up, and it's pretty big. So it can probably go. I don't know. Five feet. Five feet, five and a half foot, maybe. Um, very very primitive version of almost Jenga to a degree, because mm -hmm. you're uh, you're constantly adding stuff to the tower, and if it tips over, of course, whoever it tipped over on is the loser. Uh, it's one of those games we picked up thinking, you know, that might be fun for board. Uh, whether or not we actually play it for board is another question because it's such an odd game. We probably will eventually, but um, trying to figure out how to do this episode of board is going to be very interesting for sure. Um, very cool though. Uh, careful. 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 Yeah. Careful. Careful. Uh, this next one we found, actually, uh, 
and we're watching. Uh, we actually ran a contest for this uh, for board, uh, giving away. I've got five. I had five copies of this game, so we gave away four of them. And of course, one of them we kept for the show. But it's uh, another game, Whitman, who makes a lot of classic games called the Wacky Wizard Game. Um, very cute little looking game from the seventies. Um, I want to say this is yeah, seventy-seven, the year I was born. People. Never, they've never been played, correct? No, this has never been played. Uh, Wacky Wizard game. This the board's kind of neat, and of course it's got the classic board I like, where it's not a sticker, but they printed the the actual picture of the game on the board itself, which is kind of cool because they don't do that kind of stuff anymore. But yeah, this has never been uh, never been played. There's all your uh, there's all your your pieces there. You've got your spinner back. You've got your cards. Um, got your your cardboard pieces for the the wizard's desk and all these little little neat things. What year was this game? Seventy seven. Year I was born. And then of course. Your, your player pieces, the spinner arrow, still all sealed in the bag. Um, yeah, this this never none of these had ever been played. They were it was a case of them. So I bought a whole case of these games. Um, I still have the shipper case for this, which is kind of cool because you don't see shipper cases for that anymore like that. Um, Wacky Wizard game though is a very very cool uh, game that yeah we are this will get played um, on season two aboard, which uh, will be airing. Uh, uh, probably about the time you see this, either it has aired or will be airing shortly. But uh, this will be uh, about halfway through season two aboard. We're going to be playing this game, so very cool though. Um, I came home with this whole case, and she went, "Really?" I, was like, I well, but then you explained that you were going to do giveaways, and I was yeah. like, "Well, that's a good idea." Yeah. Actually. So um, I actually paid fifteen for the whole case. It was at an auction, and nobody bid on it except well, one guy bid on it, and he gave up. And I was like, "All right, well, looks like I win those." And then they tried to sell me there were two cases. And I was like, I really only need one case. I don't need two of them. Because uh, that's a lot of these games. Because um, there's like, you know, there's five of them in a case. So, a lot of games. Very cool, the Wacky Wizard game. The last one I got for you is, uh, is a game from Pressman. Um, when was this done? Uh, 87. But uh, this is actually, this. I think this game goes back farther than 87. I think this goes back to the 70s. Um, this is called the Original Lie Detector uh, Scientific Crime Solving Game. Um, and Carrie actually saw this, and we were like, oh, well, we have to get that. It was at a yard sale, and you can see yeah. we only paid 50 cents for it. Yeah, we only that. paid 50 cents for it, and she's like, well, we have to get that. You have to buy that, because it's goofy. And I was like, that's a good point. Um, very interesting game, though. Uh, basically, you have all the sus uh, suspects, and then you're basically using... They, they've got little... I um, can show you these little cards that basically you, you put into your... Uh, you've got your lie detector here, and then you've got all of your... Uh, Cards are somewhere here, in here. Yeah. So you've got your guilty cards, which basically have a pattern on them, um, and you would slide those in to the lie detector, like so. And then basically you would you would have a character that you would put into the, the, the base here, and then they have one one little hole here that you can stick this into, and basically you would you know the questions that were asked. You push it through and it says, you know, true. That means he's telling the truth and he's not your, he is not your suspect. But there is a, like the, you can, uh, if you press it in the wrong thing, that tells you, oh, they're lying. And that's your suspect. A very interesting game. Uh, ball self-contained, no batteries needed, uh, no batteries involved. Um, no game board, right? No, is no it? game board. It's just, it's just, uh, you've got your little, uh. You put little things in here to figure out who's doing what, and it is—it literally is all self-contained uh, in the game itself. So, yeah, no game board, which is kind of cool. But uh, yeah, this game goes back, I think, uh, back to the '70s, the lie detector game. And I love how the front, the suspect on the front, red hair. Yes. I always knew there was something fishy <laughs> about that one. Uh, very cool games, though. Uh, I look forward to playing, uh, showing you guys these on board uh, and playing them. Of course, Carrie and I will play them eventually as well, we, since we do play every game. Um, so, very cool games. Uh, that'll wrap up this episode of Collection Expansion Extravaganza right here on ToyWorldOrder.com. Uh, make sure if you're watching this on the website, go to YouTube.com uh, forward slash ToyWorldOrder and subscribe to us. It helps us out greatly. Uh, make sure you follow us on Twitter. You can follow me at PuppetDevall. You can follow the redheaded one here at Mrs. Duvall. Chase doesn't have a Twitter yet. So that may change because uh, he's become uh, quite the little diva. I know, he's diva. making quite the little cameo on the show. Yep, two episodes now in a row, this dog. This dog. Love him. Man, is he an attention hound. He's a mama's boy. Aww. There you go, gang. That'll wrap us up for this time. So uh, take care and remember uh, something I haven't said in a while. Keep digging, because uh, never know what you're going to find. Take care. <laughs>